Welcome back to the Path to Zion podcast. Hey, can I just let you in on something at the very beginning? I have a problem. I have several, actually, but the problem I have right now is I have so many recordings, I am really having issues on what to do with them. And I'm not joking. I, this is my third episode being recorded today. And it's noon. Oh my gosh, I have a problem. As I always say, like, I don't know of anyone who has time to sit down and listen to me talk for an hour and a half a day. Come on now. Let's be realistic. Well, what am I going to do with all these things? Man, I don't know. I don't want to listen to myself. <laughs> Somebody help me, would you please? Hey, have you got a podcast that you don't have time to record for? I've got a dozen episodes. Here, just take them, right? Just put them on the air somewhere. Man, I don't know what I need, but I don't know. Either I need to A, be more quiet, or B, God, please give me an outlet where I can talk some more, where I can teach some more, where I can share my present understanding towards how in the world to rediscover the ancient way. Lord, please help me. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I've got two things I want to present. Someone has got to help me make sense of. And I mean that. Somebody has got to help me make sense of two different things I'm going to present. Number 1. And I and I can't I can't get away from this. Okay? This is at the forefront of my thinking many hours of a day. And so I I would be foolish for me to just keep ignoring it because I don't want to keep bringing it up. The position of a follower of Yeshua Messiah, their position towards violence. Now listen, I've got pages and pages of stuff I've been studying for the past seven or eight weeks about this in great, great, great deep detail. Now I'm not going to go there at all. This is just like, this is just kind of thinking somewhat topically right now. But I need somebody to explain to me, and I mean like as a mature man, according to the Word of God, and according to really, truly being completely sold out to live a life completely in the pattern of Yeshua. And I'm really asking this for someone to answer this question because I hear people say with great passion how the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We don't wrestle with men. Our fight is not with man. Our fight is with principalities and powers, unseen realms, unseen places. Our armor is spiritual. Our weaponry, spiritual. Man, brother, I'm not here to fight with you. Demon possessed man, my man, my beef's not with you. I'm a spiritual man, and I'm looking as a mature spiritual man at spiritual matters. The whole world functions as immature, natural, carnal men, responding to natural, carnal issues with natural and carnal responses. And so my question is this: How? And I may, I really do mean this as a question. How in the world does anyone in Messiah say these scriptures, which are in fact 100% true, that we are not wrestling with flesh and blood men? That we are to wrestle and to fight and to grapple, that's the scriptural understanding, is you are on a mat grappling face to face with principalities and powers. Not men. And then an hour later, the same man says, hey, today, now, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about how to shoot the bad guy. Now we're going to talk about how we kill men who are fueled by principalities and powers to protect ourselves because we are responsible watchmen, warriors on the wall. I literally, and I'm telling you, I have spent Number one, I spent years arriving at where I have come to in my life with a scriptural understanding of what is right for the, for the Christ man. And two, I've spent seven weeks hard praying 
with tears for the Lord to help me. As I look into altering, alternative rather, looking into alternative positions on the matter specifically. Listening to pro-self-defense teachings out of the Bible. Listening to opposing positions because listen y'all, if I'm wrong, I want to know. If I'm wrong, I want to know. But here's the thing. I'm not a pacifist. I'm not a a pansy man who says, well, I just want to be in pansy man hippie Jesus. That's not me. I own guns. I shoot animals. Okay? I have to make that clear because everybody wants to brand me Mr. Pacifist. Some movement that I don't even know about and that I'm not in. I am a man who is walking as a spiritual being in the path of Yeshua Messiah who never, ever, ever responded to anything ever with violence. Ever. Ever. Do I need to say ever again? Struck, beaten, destroyed, and uttered not a word. Why? Because he knew the weapons of his warfare were not carnal and natural. Everybody tried to make him respond as a natural man, whether as a king or as a warrior. Defend yourself, son of God. Who told him to do that? The great deceiver. Throw yourself down, Yeshua. Show some prowess. Defend yourself. I'm telling you, I find nowhere in the scriptures about the God-man where he responded with self-defense, ever. And so I'm literally asking, friend, if this is you, if you in one side of your mouth say the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, and the other side of your mouth you're strapping a gun to your leg ready to shoot the bad guy, I need someone to explain to me this understanding. I need someone to help me understand that because I cannot understand it after years of study and hours and hours and hours lately meditating on what I know the scripture says and what I know Yeshua was and now is through me. We are to walk as he walked. I see no retaliation. I see no justified violence in the Messiah, period. I see it nowhere. And so somebody has to rightly explain to me as a mature man who's not just going to let me have it because they like guns. And good guy, bad guy scenarios. Good guy, bad guy that you hear on Fox News, man, that's like, that's playground talk to me. Don't talk to me about good guy, bad guy. That's playground talk juvenile thinking. I'm the good guy. There's bad guys everywhere. We've got to take them out. That's just silliness. That's so silly. And so I really am asking, if you're a listener of this program and you and you have a position that that makes any lick of sense to stand beside the life of Yeshua that we are clearly shown that can rightly say, look, Our weapons are not natural. We're not wrestling with men. We're not combating men. Yet also you believe you can justifiably shoot a man and kill that man who is not your enemy, but instead it's the principalities and powers within that man. Somebody's got to explain this to me that makes any lick of sense. Because as I have said in previous podcast episodes before, if our, if our battle is against unseen principalities and powers that rule and reign the air and rule any man who lets them and invites them to empower them, or an, ignorant, or an ignorance is merely possessed and overthrown or even influenced by them, if I kill the man that is a mere shell of what my enemy really is, am I affecting that enemy? Am I affecting the principality and power, or is he jumping out and going into another? Did I harm him? 
We're not merely talking about David and Goliath here. We're talking about a vast army of principalities and powers influencing the majority of mankind on the earth who is and who will continue to act out in violence under the influence of the principality and power that, friend, you cannot shoot with a gun. Someone answer me that question. If you shoot a man, can you affect in any way the principality and power within said man? Are you killing that demon? I do not understand. I get worked up, I know. I can't help it. I literally cannot help it. Literally. Why? Not because I'm anti-gun. I own guns. I may shoot a gun tonight. But listen, when you start parading around your fascination with guns, we're not talking about mere, hey brother, I'm just a, I'm just a watchman on the wall. There is something different within this because, listen, friends, men love violence and we had better be careful that we do not include ourselves in that company. Well, brother, I I just want to stand up and be a warrior watchman on the wall for the Lord. Well, are you sure? Are you sure that is absolutely why? And if, if you can't handle that question, then, brother, there's a problem because we should be able to take those questions. Why? To get to the heart of every single thing that we do and give ourselves to and therefore endorse. That absolutely affects the entire body that I am within. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. I don't know what the breakdown is in so many brothers that I know and that I meet. My life is not my own. You cannot take my life. No principality and power and no mere human being empowered by a principality and power that is governed by darkness can take my life because I lay it down. I lay it down. I don't understand this thinking. I will not take it up again. My life is in the Messiah. I no longer live. And a question that I, uh, I got to about five weeks ago in a study that I was doing is that if, if the scripture is true, and if everything I now do in the body, I do as Yeshua Messiah, then if I pull a trigger and kill a man, Yeshua Messiah is killing that man. Yeshua Messiah is killing that man. If I really believe that scripture, because we throw that around, right? Well, you can't sin. You can't look at pornography. You can't can't give to the desires of your flesh because it's the same as Yeshua Messiah doing that through your body because you are now the temple and dwelling of God himself. You had better think hard about what you're going to do, brother. Yes and amen. But it seems to not make it over into this type of thinking towards this type of action. This type of action is justified. This type of action, oh, well, yeah, that's true, but I need to handle some things. I'm just telling you, my present moment perspective that I have no problem saying could be wrong, albeit that right now I cannot find a way. I'm saying I could be full of error. I do, I'm not threatened by saying that. But what I'm saying is, my belief is that that verse is true, period. And I know for certain that Yeshua Messiah would not put a gun to any man's head and shoot him for any reason, anywhere, anyhow. I know that as sure as I'm sitting here, and if I don't know that, then I don't know Messiah. And guess what? My life is not my own. He is my absolute everything, so everything I do is is as if he is doing it. And there's no way in the world I'm going to do that. I've been writing about this. I've alluded to it just a little bit. A little offshoot from that is David was not allowed to build the temple. He wasn't allowed to build the house of the Lord. Why? He was a man of war. 
I did talk about that in a whole different message just mere days ago when the, when the prophet Nathan came to him and told him all these hard things. War will be in your house the rest of your days. And we know that that was true. He was a man of violence. He was a man of war. Now, did that cast him out from the presence of God? Was he a sinful wretch? We're not talking about that. We're talking about men who are absolutely entirely walking in the path of Yeshua Messiah. Blood was on his hands. He had spilled blood. And I'm, all I'm saying at the very least is we had better take this matter so, 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 so serious and soberly. This is not good guy, bad guy. It's just not. This is walking as the Messiah walked. And every single thing we do, every single thing we even say is our calling. Friends, we had better be careful we sift it through that filter of, okay, is this what Yeshua Messiah is doing? Because I'm, I am called to walk in the same manner he walked, period. I hear that thrown around all the time now, but there are these holes when it comes to matters that, well, 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 right now, somebody's got to stand up and defend the people. Somebody's got to defend everybody. Somebody's got to be prepared. And here's my second point. Being prepared. I say, and I realize, listen, I realize I oppose majority Christianity and even just the majority of people I know, period, presently even in my life. I hear all the time the value of being informed. As recently as today, I explained to a brother, we don't do television we don't do news. We don't do entertainment. We don't do movies. We believe what we dress like matters. We believe how we relate to people matters. We believe every single thing we listen to and watch matters. Every single thing. I want to hear the, the unadulterated word of the Lord as much as I know how in my life and in my household. That is the goal of my life. And that, my friends, is the true understanding of holiness. Holy, consecrated, set apart, and distinct. Period. In every possible way I can. I've been called legalistic. I've been called fanatical. I've been called this and that. I don't care. It's fine. My goal is to be holy as he is holy. Period. That is my trajectory. That is what I'm aiming for. I'm not looking to be a patriotic Christian American. That's too small. That's too small. That's attainable in my own flesh. I can do that in the natural. I can do that in the natural. Millions of people do it in the natural. Defend yourself. Love the nation. Pray, pray scriptures and, and just pretend it's talking about America. Anybody can do that. Men in the world outside of Messiah, vile, evil men respond in self-defense and self-preservation. You don't need the Spirit of God to empower you to do that. Everyone does that. The whole world retaliates. Push me, I'm going to push you back ten times harder. It's the way of the world. It's the pattern of the evil one. It's the way of Cain. And so to get strictly to my second point, we're influenced, friends. I sat with some brothers this morning and we were talking about deliverance. We were talking about how you arrive at the unadulterated word of the Lord for any other person. And the man that was sharing, I couldn't have agreed any more than what I did. He talked about how their pattern is you don't, you don't interrogate the person. You don't ask them their opinion of what's wrong with them. You don't ask them their, their negative tendencies. You don't ask them to tell you their issues. You sit them down, you pray, you beseech the Lord. You ask the Lord, give me words, God. Give us vision. Give us your revelation. Give us prof prophetic utterance from your throne, God. Give us something that, that we ourselves do not know. Well, why do you not know? Because you're uninformed. You are in the dictionary's definition of ignorant. You are ignorant. And then the Spirit of the living God can speak. Why? 
You're not going according to your own understanding. Are we not commanded to, don't, to not lean on our own understanding? I believe that's applicable here as well. We depend on the Spirit of God. Now listen, this is how I live my life according to lifestyle. Because of why? If you have one, I said this two, three days ago, when you have one foot in Fox News and one foot in the eternal word of God and hearing the prophetic utterances of what the Spirit is saying, you're mixed. And man, I could have this argument with everybody in my life for the most part, with a select few remaining. Most everybody in my life, I heard this yesterday, we've got to be informed. We've got to be informed. God does not want us uninformed. He doesn't want us ignorant. We have to be ready. We have to be ready. Okay, yes and amen. You know how I get informed? You know how I get ready? I go to my basement and I pray. I talk to the Father. I listen for what the Spirit's saying. I am ready and waiting to respond to what the Spirit says, Joel, go. Joel, stay. Stop. Go. Stop. Go. I listen to that. Well, you're just going to be uninformed. You're not going to be ready. Friends, I do not understand this argument. This is why this is number two. I do not compute. <laughs> I don't understand the, the divided thinking. Because outside of the other side of our mouths, we say we trust in the Lord. Like this matter. We trust in the Lord to give us the utterance. We trust in the Lord to give us the words. Why? Because if we are informed by other sources, then it affects and influences our decision making. It affects our thinking. It affects our reasoning. And we respond out of information instead of what the Lord is saying. Do you hear what I'm saying? Is this principle true all the way across the board or is it select only to things that, well... I still need to know what Fox News said so that I know what the Lord is saying. To me, it is juvenile. It's not spiritual man thinking. It is not mature thinking. Why? Because can you tell me right here and right now that whatever news source you listen to, and I don't care which one, how in the world do you know that what they're telling you that you're being informed by is true. Because that's what I responded to with this brother. I said, the awesome thing about what you're presenting is then you're not going by what you're told because like if I'm sitting in the middle of the room and I need deliverance and I tell you what's wrong with me, but I made up everything I'm submitting to you, you are asking the Lord to reveal wisdom that is not our own according to a list that's submitted to you from a flawed being that could be all fabricated and you are sourcing your entire perspective on something that is mixed. And I'm telling you, I am convinced, and that's why this thing is twofold. It's the, it's the respond to violence with violence, self-defense pr promotion, where I have the right to take my life into my own hands even though I say it's no longer I that live, and I have to be informed by the news of the kingdoms of men in order to know what the Spirit is saying. I cannot understand these two principles. It literally blows my mind, and I'm being honest. I do not understand, and I have tried to understand. I have tried to understand. I have been purposely ingesting opinions that I do not agree with to try to get perspective that I know is not what I presently have. I've been purposely eating things that I do not agree with in order to say, Lord, I am more than willing to be proven wrong. I am more than willing to, to find error within my perspective of what I say, what I do, and what I promote. I am willing to say I'm wrong. It would be so much easier if I'm wrong because guess what? Everybody else, again, with the select few, and I mean a couple, that I know want to justify violence for violence and want to watch Fox News and then determine what the Lord is saying we must do about it. It would be so easy for me to just say, you know what, whatever. Who cares? 
God will just sort it all out. No way. We have got to labor. And friends, this is why I'm recording what I've been doing the last month about the laboring alongside the brethren in the midst of disagreement. Why do we need the, need the unity of the Spirit? Well, most of the church doesn't because we disagree and we leave. But if, in fact, you remain, then you have to have the unity of the Spirit because that might be all you have for a season. That might actually be its purpose, which is to unify men together when disagreement is right here front and center, right in front of my eyes. Because guess what? It is. Now, that's not the end of the world. That's not. In no way is it, well, somebody had better settle this and fix it right now or I'm out of here. I'm not saying that, and my life is proving that to be true. But what I am saying is someone needs to explain to me rightly as a mature man under absolute self-control how that makes sense of how one minute our weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but only against principalities and powers. And five minutes later, you justify shooting that man that you're not wrestling against. And somebody needs to rightly and maturity, in self-control as a spiritual man, show me in the scriptures how we are instructed to gather information from the kingdoms of men and natural news sources in order to determine the word of the Lord and how I respond to it. Someone needs to explain these things to me, or else I'm going to continue to be out here on the outside very much confused and hesitant and resistant to give myself fully to the body of Christ in the measure that's before me because these issues are not being faced. They're not being discussed. They're just saying, this is what we're doing, and this is how it's going to go. I know you have questions, but like this is what we do. I'm saying somebody needs to answer questions. Somebody needs to take the time, make the time to answer questions. Because, excuse me, look, I know I'm here in the whole class and I look like a fool, but I've got some questions. I'm not trying to be, look, I don't want the spotlight. I wish I didn't have to have it, but like I do. Okay, so I have some questions. Does anyone have the time? to answer some questions. Because listen, friends, some questions need to be asked because we are all full of error and we are all full of flaw and we are all doing things in the natural strengths of men when we're striving to be kingdom men. And that's okay as long as we're willing to come alongside one another and say, you know what, brother? I may be wrong. You're admitting you might be wrong, and look, you're, oh, whoa, I listened to the last 30 minutes of that podcast. I can tell you're pretty passionate, but hey, I see you are willing to be wrong. I see you are guided by the Spirit in humility, and I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same. Let's seek the Lord. Let's fast and pray and seek His face instead of just advance what we've already got going. Because what? We may be wrong. So friends, please, someone respond to me on these two matters. Please, as a mature, self-controlled, spiritual man, not with your opinion. I don't care about your opinion any more than I need you to care about mine. This is not about our opinions. This is I'm not throwing this out there for swine to nibble on. This is for mature, spiritual men. I want a conversation with mature, spiritual men. Not according to our own understanding, our own reasoning, our own justification, and our own preference. I want that. I desire that. So I don't care where you live. Listen, we have people who listen to this podcast right now in 14 other countries. I don't care where you live. I want to hear your perspective and how you arrived there. I desire to know one thing. Capital T, truth. I want truth. I I am willing to sell everything I have to possess truth. And I do that by the choices in my life. I will possess truth. I will. We have to make the sacrifice and the exchange. So if you want to know truth, I want to know truth. If you can lay aside your own personal agenda and preference, I can too. Let's find truth. Lord, help your people to find truth. I believe it's possible, or else I wouldn't even try. It's possible by one, one, 
one way. The unity of the Spirit. The unity of the Spirit. I believe something supernatural is on the other side for men who will lay down their lives for real for what the Spirit is saying to unify us until we agree. Amen.